what vehicle should you get? Uh, what's the ideal vehicle? Um, I'm gonna tell you that if you're brand new and you're just starting out with this, um, it's the one you got, right? Whatever you're driving, I don't care what it is. You could be a 1973 AMC Pacer, remember those? If it's in good running condition and it can handle a bunch of miles and it can handle sitting there and idling for a while, in front of insurance houses when it's 105 degrees with 99.6 thousand percent humidity, um, then drive that. Um, don't buy a new vehicle. Don't buy a truck because you think you need a truck. If, if you just got a car, don't buy an SUV. Um, just use what you got. I would say money well spent is to take the vehicle that you have and take it to a trusted mechanic, right? Which is, you know, that's a whole ch other challenge. Um, but if you may, if you maintain your vehicles, you probably know you probably got it, somebody that you trust, right? Um, take it to a trusted mechanic and have to say, listen, I'm going to be driving in this a bunch. I'm going to be idling. I'm going to be doing a lot of stop and go driving. I'm going to be doing a bunch of highway miles. Start at the top of this car right here. You can go to the, the bottom of the tires and tell me absolutely everything that, that is wrong with it or that, that could be upgraded or maintained or whatever to make this a, a really solid vehicle. And if it costs you $5,000 to do that, then just do it because that's going to be money much more better spent than saying, oh, well, I can get a payment, car payment of, you know, $353 zero down and da 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 And that's a brand spanking new car that you're going to go bang up, right? in the field. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at hagueeducation.com. That's my recommendation. Just run with the car you got later. Same deal with the with the RVs. You know, you decide, um, I'm in it. This is, I love this work. It, it lights you up. You can't wait for your next deployment. Then start looking around, doing your own research, you know, based on how much money you you're making um, and find yourself, I'm going to say, you do whatever you want to do right at that point, entirely up to you. Um, but I'm going to say, because I, and this is the same advice I'll give you if you're going to buy an RV or if you really want to buy an RV, even later, like when you're, you've got this figured out. What I would do is I would probably go back with the vehicle uh, that I ran with from 2006 until the very end, which was the 07 Forerunner that I bought brand new at the end of 06. I could have bought that car, a three-year-old version of it, and still ran it. It's got 576,000 miles on it right now. I still have it, by the way. Um, I would get a smaller SUV. Um, it gets better fuel economy. Um, it's got four-wheel drive that I didn't really use very much. Um, but when I I needed it, it was there. And um, But it's, I don't know, it's not required, right? You don't need to have a pickup truck. I like an SUV. You, you could do a pickup truck with a camper shell on it, I think, because it makes it easier to, to, look, to mount your ladders on there. But I like an SUV because it's fully enclosed. When I lock the doors, they're all locked, right? Um, and I can load it and unload it pretty easily. And if it's, you know, I've got my spares and extras in the very back. And if it looks like it's going to rain, I just close the door, roll up the windows, and I'm good to go. Dealer's choice, right? It's, it's, it's whatever you think is going to work. If, if it were me, I'm going to buy a three to five year old. Um, maybe not too much older than that because then they, you start to get into the wear and tear that the previous owner put on it. Um, I'm not super, I don't care a whole lot about having high miles. A vehicle that is three years old that has, you know, 100,000 miles on it, most likely those were highway miles, right? So it just sat there and basically idled in six gear or whatever, just going down the highway. I'm not scared of that. Um, if I do a pre-purchase check on it, to have my mechanic, you know, to give it the once over. Hey, everything looks great. You know, the transmission leaks a little bit. Maybe we'll address that. Or, you know, I, there's a crack in the radiator, whatever it is, right? Just fix, just have it fixed, right? If you find a good vehicle, um, I'm going to, I'm probably going to get something used because it's going to get banged up in the field and you're going to drive the wheels off of it, right? Same thing goes for RVs. Buy an old RV, right? And then get the absolute smallest possible one that you can, uh, that you can stand, right? a 19 foot, 18 foot, 16 foot little RV. Um, I don't want to spend any more than five or $10,000 cash for one of those. I'm going to get a 10 or 15 year old plus, because if you look at a, a 20 year old RV and you look at the components, you look at the way the doors and the walls and everything are put together. And then you look at a brand new one, it's almost exactly the same, right? It's, there's not a whole lot of like super advanced new technology in RVs. It's all cheap 
They're just cheap. You can beat the hell out of it, right? Um, so you're gonna use it up. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to have get hit with, um, you know, brand new depreciation on a vehicle or RV when I'm just gonna beat the hell out of it, right? I wanna save a little bit of that money back for myself. Find out how you can get free access to my complete online course on how to become a highly paid independent insurance adjuster right here.